Hello, Hello. I'm Miles. I'm Tamara. And welcome, welcome to, to Online, Online Off Grid. We're on a journey to find freedom, and what's interesting about that is that, in truth, I certainly don't know exactly what freedom is. Um, in society a life... teaches, sorry, no, society no. teaches what freedom should be, um, but I don't agree with that. To work your tail off for a while and then have freedom when you're. Well, they, they say that's what freedom. Uh, well, I guess you're right. Yeah, they, 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 the, the, I guess the, the cycle we're all put on to educate, qualify, work, retire, die is basically as in simple terms is it. And that's what the government wants because that's how they make the money. Um, the matrix in reality. Uh, yeah, it is. We're, we're, tra we're trapped in the matrix. And I guess, yeah, our, our sense of freedom, whilst we don't know what freedom is, we know what it isn't. Yes. And it's not being part of the... Uh, mad hat world of the matrix and being uh, just conforming to, to what society wants us to do which l doesn't let us do what we really want to do so uh, we're going to discover what freedom is and we're going to share what we find freedom to be and to see if that resonates with you and uh, to see if it's something you might want to because one of the key things we want to do as online off grid and it is our strap line is we are freedom finders and in doing so, we want to help others find their freedom too, whatever that freedom may be. And if that means they need some sort of financial way to find that freedom, then we're going to be looking at ways to get out of the rat race. You talked about this, the 80-hour week, even the 40-hour week, even the four-day week, whatever that might be, uh, ways to finance that as we find out ways to do it and that we can share those too. And to live simpler. To not, when, when you don't want a seven Porsches and a home mm. too large to clean, yeah. and the world is our backyard. Yeah. Not that we have, or ever have had, by the way. I think what's important to note is that we ha we're not here living a free, um, on, you know, on some sort of massive ba bank of savings. We've got literally nothing. We're in a, a 20 year old camper van, which you'll see here, and we, uh, that's all we could afford. And we are finding our way, realizing that we had to take the leap of faith to make us take the steps necessary to, to, to make it all work. So we are finding ways to make money as we go. Yes, and it's a journey, ups and downs. Oh, yes. Pendulums. Ro roller we'll coaster share ride. All. Absolutely. <laughs> and not just us, the motorhomes have a couple of roller coaster rides itself. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So we go, so we're going to share all. Yes. So to get to know us a little more, mm -hmm. I was born and raised in Minnesota, Mankato, Minnesota in the USA, northern mid United States, was raised in a very small town, um, raised very strict Lutheran. Yeah, Lutheran is a very, very strict um, mm. uh, Christian, religion. Religion. Christian religion, faith, uh, yes. but strict in kind of like Catholic style strict. Yes, yeah. very, okay. probably even Possibly more. Possibly even more, wow. Yes. But um, I am grateful for that. Still um, believe in God and the Bible, but not in organized religion. So, uh, yes, I was born and raised there. Then after graduated high school, uh, moved to New England. Uh, that was a long, rough 15 years. At the end of that, uh, went through a horrible, beyond miserable uh, divorce, court proceedings, um, years, uh, hell. I went through hell, basically. Um, left with nothing, moved on to Texas, left entire life there, left my daughter, sadly. Um, just went through a whole lot. Family came against me. Um, it was a hard time. But uh, then went on to Texas, lived there for years. Yes. Well, I'm just wondering, rather well, than just skate on for that, because mm. it, it might sound like, how could you possibly leave your daughter? Mm. Uh, there's so much more to this, some that we can and can't say. Mm. Uh, what I would say that I think is worth, worth mentioning here is that um, the family came against, her own family, Tamara's own family came against her in the uh, preference to her now ex-husband. Uh, for the custody and in America it's a very very different system we, we have harsh systems in most legal uh, legal divorces anyway but America's is just ridiculous and what was uh, judged is just beyond belief what Tamara's been through is just beyond belief I'm not saying anybody out there who's been through divorce and a similar sort of thing doesn't go through hell my mm. goodness it's all hell uh, this is just a, a slightly different way of, you know, where, where it came to the point of not being allowed any 
custody at all. Mm -hmm. Now put that in the mix. If you've been through divorce before and you've had to, to arrange custody, um, have a custody arrangement that works for both parties as best it can, then fine. Mm -hmm. and, and of course it has to work best for kids. Well, in this case, the court judged that Tamara wasn't allowed to see uh, her daughter at all. So I had to say that. Okay. Yeah, I'm wearing sunglasses, but uh, tears in my eyes. But um, so yes, uh, sadly, painstakingly walked walked away, left that because it was beyond miserable. It's beyond imagination, and I'm uh, eventually I'm going to write a book, and I. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about that, but I know I'll share yeah. more. Okay. Um, but so you moved on to Texas. Moved on to Texas, worked for a uh, non-profit religious organization, which they helped me through the previous hell of my life. But uh, I had no self-worth. I, mm. I overworked. I don't want to say I was overworked because um, I was a grown-up. I chose to allow that. Yes. Um, chose slavery. Yes, basically. I chose to, yeah. you know, work holidays. But, but Eighteen hours to, a day. And the to rest give. Of it. Yeah. To, to, yeah, to give. I mean, which you do when you volunteer for an organisation. I mean, there are volunteer organisations. There are volunteer organisations. This wasn't quite like that. Hmm. Um, however, um, yeah, it was. Uh, I, uh, it gave was, my life. You to gave that. your life to that. You gave your life to that. Um, which kind of where. I can chip in here in that because that's where our lives joined mm. because after I mean I had a, a, a very different upbringing I guess but because um, yours was very much like life on the prairie style yes, exactly. uh, youth it wasn't is. it uh, where her own mother was the the teacher of the little schoolhouse yes. uh, of of only one room and only so, so many students it really was you know? it was you know the the have you ever seen house on the prairie the little house on the, prairie. House on the prairie it was prairie. exactly, exactly that. that's how i was raised yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it it really yeah. was that wasn't just a fictitious show to us no, it was real it wasn't, it wasn't. um yeah. and uh, and i had a very different kind of upbringing um my parents decided that uh, the oh, i'm the youngest of three and uh, we decided that we were going to go to boarding school so my dad went across to the middle east to work for the oil companies just to make the money to afford it because it's not cheap mm. and at the little uh, ripe old age of six and a half I started boarding school mm. and, um, and I won't go into the, the, uh, the ins and outs of that because there's a whole life there of uh, going through right up to O level um, in, in public school at a place called Repton in Derbyshire which is a fantastic school and I met some fantastic people and uh, in touch with still some of those now and after that uh, I eventually I, I kind of got lost um, and I've got I will go into the story another time because uh, it started off with my mother dying when I was 10 not really mm. coming to terms with that uh, and, and it disrupted uh, my life to a degree my dad then remarried to a family that should really never have been involved with us um, and that's nothing against them at all um, and uh, it just didn't really work out but I, I, I got lost and but in, in the end I found a place where I felt I belonged uh, along my journey and that was in the Royal Air Force where at uh, again the ripe old age of 18 just I joined the Royal Air Force and served for 12 years working in the most incredible squadron as an electrical engineer, well, electrical uh, technician on uh, the AWACS, which is, uh, in fact, I'll show you this picture here of, if you don't know what one of those is, and it was the, it's the best in the world, best in the world uh, uh, job at the time, and again, meeting the most incredible people mm -hmm. who were literally depending on each other uh, in sometimes um, somewhat life-threatening situations. Uh, but otherwise just in, in situations where we had to go to wars and stuff like that and mm. support our aircraft as we did mm. and um, uh, and, so I, and so I but I came out of that I decided that that wasn't where I belonged it wasn't the end of my journey certainly it wasn't where I was going to stay and uh, I left and started a business in the online marketing web web world having sort of converted my knowledge from uh, electrical side of things electronics over to a sort of more business architecture and IT around the sort of end of the 90s uh, when it was coming back in after the dot-com crash in fact anyway so um, I then uh, the sort of fast track forward in, 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 in working those businesses again not happy uh, working slaving away all those hours to build a business to to make a kind of minimum amount yeah, employees any more than we were just wasn't really um, working. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, I guess, probably points out I'm not necessarily a great businessman. 
Um, it was, you know, there are successful businesses and, and there are successful businesses. And I, mine was a success in what, what we, our results, but not necessarily in, in happiness. And that's, that was the key thing. And I um, then uh, decided to give everything up. And I sold lots, I gave bucket loads away um, to walk away with two suitcases to ju jump on a jet to work, to go and volunteer for the company I was at who was a, uh, my client from an online marketing point of view uh, for the previous year and uh, to go and volunteer for the same organization that uh, Tamara is working for and that's when our join uh, our, the, the joining of our journeys and the joining of our lives uh, commenced yes I actually so, looked you up on Facebook and saw that you were in the RAF and I was very impressed <laughs> 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 so yes, so we met there, and um, that's a whole other story. Yeah, but which we will go into another time yes. because it didn't turn out quite what we thought. Mm. So uh, there's another whole drama there, mm. the roller coaster ride that we had. Um, but, but it led us to where we are yes, now we through were. what we've already talked about in terms of our the visa journey and the mm. uh, visa application journey yes. and our nudge into nature. Yes, and and to looking back, I am. We are learning to be grateful, and so I say, bless everyone in my first 40 years of life. Mm. Because family, I, I do want to say not every family member of mine came against me, but none of them mm. did come support me either. How, yes. you know, and but, haven't but, done since. But bless them yeah. all, you know, they're on their own journey, and so mm. I've learned a lot. I've learned to be able to walk away from blood relatives, even though it's such a, a, strong um, organization where people always believe no you have to stay with your family stay with their blood it means more than anything and I've learned no it, it, it doesn't sometimes if they are not for you and and completely against you walk away it's, oh, it's not worth it and so so you know and and then from from everyone just Bless them all. They're on their journey. Well, send love, yes. like Wayne oh, yeah, Dyer yeah, yeah. says. So send everyone love. Lo love, to, love to everyone that's uh, supported us, and, they, and those that haven't have yeah. actually helped us to steer. Yes. You know, yeah. so um, yeah, not all family has been supported. Some family has, which is fantastic to have those with us on mm -hmm. our journey in our in our minds always. Mm -hmm. And we've had the most incredible friends, yes. the most incredible friends who who know the truth yeah. and saw through to the truth. Sometimes when we're even denying it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. like we were blaming ourselves and again that self-worth thing yes. um, well we realize we are worth more than that yeah. whatever that that is you know and um, we are I mean not talking a net worth here we're talking a real life human worth yes. and um, and uh, so yeah that's that's where we sort of got to today yeah. um, and there's so much more to share yes and one just quick thing oh. I had uh, when I was 30 I believe I I had a depleted disc in my sacrum mm. and couldn't walk, couldn't stand up, went to a chiropractor over and over, would get a little better, got worse. But now I run and jump on trampolines and we go Some, on yeah, hikes. And sometimes dance like a monkey. Uh, <laughs> you, may, you may have seen. Yes, um, I'm quite good so at that. <laughs> I'm better. Yeah, which, um, which is absolutely... I don't, I don't like necessarily using words like miracle, but what else do you put yeah. to it? Yeah. Uh, every other source of knowledge and expertise failed to cure that. Yes, and, and doctors, you cured yourself. Said, doctors said to me, there's no cure to this. There might be in a few years, we might come up with one, mm. but nothing. There's no hope mm. for you In other words, ever. embrace a life of paralysis, yeah. really, yes. uh, in effect. And yet you yes. cured yourself. And, yeah. and again, that's another story which yes. we'll go into because it's, yeah. just, it's just opened my eyes to how mm. powerful uh, we are as a, just a biological makeup that we yes. can just do anything, yeah. that we achieve anything. Yes. And um, but there you go. So that, that's a little bit more yes. about us. There, there are obviously us. like everybody's lives. There's so much, much, much more. Uh, yes. And is there anything else? You, any, if you want, if there's anything you want to know, mm. ask. Yes. Yeah, ask us because there'll be lots of bits of that we missed out. We thought we wouldn't go into too much detail on this mm. for now, but uh, we will tell more as we go. We will. And and from Wayne Dyer, we're not who we what we are. I am not, I don't define myself as what I do or past that I've been through. Yeah. I've learned a lot and I have strong characteristics. Mm. I have greater, yeah. I'm greater than who I was 20, 10, two years ago. Yes. And so who I am is a uh, spiritual being on a physical, whatever, yeah. what, do you, what does he say? Uh, you're, you're, a spiritual a spir you're a spirit on, a, in a, on a having a physical, physical experience. Yes. Uh, you know, I yeah. am my characteristics. I am 
I'm not a job definition or past. But well, none of us are. Um, I think that's what I came to the conclusion of, is because uh, there are two main things we've been following lately. My Map to Freedom, which is something that is fan absolutely fantastic, and Dr. Wayne Dyer, who's just an amazing way of explaining things in a non forceful aggressive way about how, how we are and why we are, and why we strive for what we strive for. Uh, some of us even strive for a why, and he greatly, yeah. greatly explains why there isn't a why as such, or, or the why is wrapped into something else. And that we are what we are because of who we are, not what we do. Mm. We're, not, we're not who we are because of our qualifications. That doesn't make us the people we are. Mm. It helps us open doors that we open, but they're not necessarily the doors that you want to open. I've suddenly realized I've closed some doors on things that I had to qualify for, and thank goodness those doors yeah. are closed, because when those were closed, are closed others opened mm. and have, have led, led to doing some of the most amazing things and being mm. free yeah. as we are today whilst we're still finding our way. We still yeah. have to find a way to, to make money to live yeah. and yeah. Uh, that's going to be an ongoing journey we'll share too. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. There go. Yeah, But anyway, there's a little bit more about us little bit more uh, about and us. Uh, as, as more becomes relevant to what we're doing and what we used to do, then we'll bring those up too. And it, um, But it'd be lovely to hear from you and your stories too and find out what you're up to. And uh, any questions you got, just throw them my way. Yeah. So for us, this is not the beginning of the end. It's the end of the beginning. And we realized that we were opening a, a door to a new chapter on our journey. And to do that, we realized that means closing one or two. <laughs> or, or, oh, more. or more. Or <laughs> more. In fact, yes, <laughs> uh, we've had to close quite a few doors. Yeah. And we also learned that it was only by closing those doors that the one that really counted was open so come join us we're on facebook and youtube and online offgrid.com <laughs>